Hello, welcome back to Buckle Up. My name is Rob Wilson and this is the new Lexus LBX. And today I'm gonna to find out, can a Lexus really work in this small size class? Right, let's start at the front as we usually do. And the reason that I mention that this is a small baby Lexus is because it is the smallest car they've ever made. They've never made a car in this size class before. So can the luxury export to the US still remain luxury in the Toyota Yaris Cross form that this is underneath? But you can see this is very different to the Aris Cross at the front. It's got its own Lexus headlights, its own Lexus grille, not quite as gopping as they have been in the past where they're a bit like, ah. But this is, this is a more tasteful design, I think. But what we'll do now is we'll go look at the side and see if they've done many changes with the Aris Cross there. Right, here at the side, we've got some 18 inch alloy wheels, those are optional. We've got this lovely blue paint. It is really quite nice and a contrasting black roof with black side mirrors as well. Now here we've got something that is different to the Aris Cross. We've got electronic door handles. So they look like a door handle, but they don't pull out. You just push a little button behind and they pop open. A luxury feature, which is also quite irritating because they don't always open when you want them to. And when you're inside, you've got a little button to press and they don't always open when you want to from in there. So I'm not sure that the name that they've given these, which is like easy access doors is correct. But here we've got more of the rest of this shape because it's based on the Aris Cross. It's short, squat, and then here at the back, we can see the light bar, as is the fashion nowadays. We've got the Lexus script spelled out, which is unusual. That never used to be a thing, but again, that's become more fashionable. We've got the badge model designation, LBX, but I shall open up the electronic boot because this is a luxury vehicle. And if I sit in here, it's got 400 litres of boot space, unless you go for the all-wheel drive, which is an option on this car, then that comes down quite significantly to 320 litres. If I fold the seats down, I'll get basically a thousand litres of space, which is quite good. There are a couple of neat features as well. We've got some tie-down points in each of the four corners, but unfortunately, there is no room for this under the boot floor because that's where your batteries are basically. So you've got your tire inflation kit and your locking wheel nut and towing eye, but that's about it. There is quite a significant boot lip here as well, which is about the length of my hand. To be fair, it's pretty practical. It's bigger than quite a few others in this class. So I'll give it a free pass on that one. But what I will go and check now are the back seats because I have a feeling I might struggle for room there. Well, it turns out I was correct in my assumptions because I can't really get my knees behind the driver's seat, which is set up in my position. Now for reference, I am six foot two or 188 centimeters tall. So if you aren't as gargantuan as me, you might be fine. But equally for headroom, I couldn't sit up straight. And these back seats are quite upright. They don't really recline, well, they don't recline. So I can't really decide to have my seat in any other position than this. And I wouldn't be that comfortable if I'm being brutally honest. In terms of features back here, we've got a seat back pocket on the front passenger seat, not one on the driver's seat. We've got no armrest in the middle. We do have Isofix on the outer seats and we've got in this specification, the Premium Plus, we've got some Allen Cantara on the center of the seat with some contrast stitching. We've got pleathery, leathery, I don't know. I can never tell the difference these days on the center seat. And if I was sat in that center seat, there is a bit of a hump in the floor. So I'm not sure that I would have any foot room. I've got two USB-C charging ports down here in the middle but there are no climate controls here at all no vents no ability to alter the temperature on the doors you've got hard-ish plastics here on the top 
to be honest. You do have a bottle holder in the back door, which is good because not every car in this class does have one. And then you've got those electronic door releases, which are temperamental, let's say. But I'll uh, hop up in the front and hopefully things are a lot better up there. Okay, so up front, and I will mention the room actually, I wouldn't normally do this, but I don't think that this driver's seat goes far enough back for me personally, or far enough down. I've, I've still got headroom, even in the lowest position, but I would like it to go down a little bit more. That just might be a tall person thing. Again, if you aren't tall, don't worry about it. On my steering wheel, here in front of me, I've got my controls for the audio and selecting the track and all of that sort of stuff. Configuring my digital driver's display here in the middle. And on this side, I've got my cruise control functions, my lane keep assist buttons, and all of that lovely sort of stuff. You do have a few buttons down to the side of the steering wheel as well. You've got your fuel flap release, your boot opener, and you can set your memory seats in this particular specification. You've got three options for that. And then in the middle is the party piece, which is your nice big screen. And this, I have to say, is very different to the Yaris Cross. It does feel like a Lexus up here. The materials are nice and squidgy and soft, and you've got this Alcantara on the center console. You've got Alcantara up here on the dash. You've got nice stitching. These controls all feel nicely damped and weighted and you know, everything that you touch feels pretty good. So on your screen, you can connect your Apple CarPlay and your Android Auto. You've also got a few little buttons along the bottom for controlling the temperature more easily. You don't have to go into the screen to do that. So that's a thumbs up. But what I don't like still is that you do have to go into the screen if you want to turn on your heated seat, for example. I've got a couple of USB-C chargers here, a wireless charging pad for my phone, a shortcut buttons for the surround view cameras and parking assist and then if I come down here this is my drive selector so I've got park drive neutral reverse and sport if I want to although this is an ECVT same as the one in the Toyotas so I'm not quite sure if that is sporty in my opinion parking brake traction control off eco mode and EV mode buttons but practicality wise, I have a bottle of water which fits nicely into the door pocket there. It can also very easily fit in the center, but there is space for only one bottle. Oh, but wait, hidden under your armrest, if you lift it up and slide it backwards, another cup holder appears as if by magic. And if I lift up that armrest, there's actually a decent bin in here as well. And you can move this cup holder about if you so wish. But I'll move this back out of the way. I'll move that back forward. And then I'll have a look in the glove box because it's not very big. You've got your manual in there, but it's not fantastic. You'd fit a few other things, maybe an ice scraper or something like that. But that's about it. It. You do have a little cubby down here under the infotainment as well. So if you've got a small bag or something that you want to just stick in there that's easily in reach, it is rubberized so it shouldn't rattle around too much. But what I think we'll do now is head out onto the road and drive this because I want to see how different is it to the Aris Cross. Right, okay then. So driving the Lexus LBX out on the road and I guess I'll start off by talking about the important stats associated with this car. So we've got a 1.5 three-cylinder engine that's mated to a hybrid system and that is the exact same engine out of the Yaris Cross which I keep mentioning and that means we've got 134 brake horsepower, 185 newton meters of torque, and that means in this front wheel drive version, we go from 0 to 60 in 9.2 seconds and on to a top speed of 106 miles an hour, which is all perfectly adequate. The main benefit of this powertrain with the ECVT gearbox is that it does 
ridiculous miles to the gallon. It's rated at around 60 on the WLTP cycle and it will do that, especially if you're driving around town. Now, I've driven this powertrain in the Mazda 2 and Harry's driven it in the Aris Cross. He got 90 something miles to the gallon in the Aris Cross when he was really trying. So that gives you a better understanding of just how efficient this powertrain can be. The downside is having an ECVT means that when you do plant your foot down, it is quite a vocal engine because it doesn't rev like a traditional automatic gearbox would do. It picks a rev band, so if you are matting your foot into the carpet, then that band is incredibly high, so you just get a noise which is fine because the majority of the time you're not going to be doing that and as I'm driving now I can't even hear it. I know that it is on though and it will, when you ride driving around town it will just mainly be in EV mode and it is very quiet. It does feel quieter and more luxurious than the Yaris equivalent when you're driving it on the road, there's definitely been more sound deadening. One thing that is a little bit unusual for a Lexus is the ride seems quite stiff and bouncy at points, especially compared to other cars in this segment. It's a bit of a weird oversight, really, because everything else about the car is screaming, Attention, in one mile, roadworks. Everything about the car is screaming luxury and quiet and comfort, except the ride. Now, that lady does like to interrupt while you're driving. There are a lot of safety systems that have to be incorporated into cars now, and some are easier to turn off than others. This is not one of the easy ones. Some cars have shortcut buttons here on the steering wheel. This does not. So, if you do not turn that off every time you get in this lovely lady will interrupt you while you're driving telling you that you're not looking where you're going and that there's some sort of danger ahead which there probably isn't is it a driver's car no absolutely not not even slightly but if you want a fun car in this segment then the ford puma is the best bet if you want the most economical it's this or the aris cross if you want the most comfortable, it's probably something like uh, Skoda Kamiq. And the, the, the VW Group cars are also the biggest as well. So yeah, it's it, it fits its brief, its segment. It has its USP on the economy, but um, nothing flashy, which I think is sort of quite Lexus. It's understated, just gets on and does the job. But with that in mind, let's head back and I will do a proper conclusion. Right then, the LBX. Is it worthy of the Lexus badge? Well, I do think that Lexus have done enough to up the quality and the luxury feel and just generally the design of the car to warrant it being a luxury vehicle. It's more going up against things like the Audi Q2 than it is the Skoda Kamiq, for example. It's in that price bracket above. I think the finish is nicer. Everything just feels nicer. And you're still getting that ridiculous MPG that you get from that Toyota powertrain. So it's, it's like the best of both worlds. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a like. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the LBX. Genuinely want to know what you think, because I think it's actually won me over. Please do subscribe to the channel and ding the notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. And if you want to follow us, we've got all our social media links also down in the description. If you want to support what we do, you can buy some lovely, lovely, sweet, sweet merch, or you can become a channel member right here on YouTube and get exclusive behind the scenes videos and podcasts. But thank you again for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.